start to me creating this song. I just really like that movement. And I found that I just kept looping it and it was one of those ones where it just keeps going round and round and um, it, you know, doesn't really want to stop and doesn't really need to go anywhere else. The next thing that I added was probably the drums. So this would have been the initial idea. which ended up being quite smashed through a little Boss KM60 mixer. Once I had the drums down, I went straight to bass and created this guy. As soon as I had this down, I was like, all right, I've got a really nice solid foundation to work from and I can explore melody, harmony, you know, rhythm and, and other aspects that can just sort of sit on top of this bass. Because I can just cycle around and everyone's having a good time. You know? <laughs> I was hearing slap bass on top of this, so I got my friend Nick Lamb to come into the studio because I don't play the bass. And I really like the way that that sat with, with this bass. I was really hearing that pop. Yeah, little things like that that you just hear. As well as having the piano, I added multiple other keyboard instruments. This is an Alepian, which is an electric piano, which I love the sound of this. Interesting Japanese electric piano. I also chucked in a clavi. Always go to a clavi for more rhythmic, kind of guitar y, squelchy kind of parts. It's also a whirly in there, for a bit more sustain. Push it into another section. This is a classic synth in my collection, which I turn to a lot, which is the Roland SH2000. It's just got a particular dirty mono lead sound that I just can't find on many other synths. So that guy features quite a bit as the lead improv, kind of improv, but it's kind of a, a, a similar concept throughout the whole kind of track. I always love having vocals in, in, in instrumental tracks as sort of like a backing theme because of the nice organic kind of feeling. I think. While I had Nick Lamb in the studio, we wrote this melody together. So I tracked this line in MIDI and then shot it out to a bunch of different synths to create the full melody. And this, the idea, like, I remember hearing a band called Jagged Jazzist and some of their earlier records, like the Sticks, they were able to get these beautiful distorted lead sounds, which I always liked. And this was something that I was thinking about when I was creating this lead, this line. So there's multiple different sounds that I just fed MIDI to and then created them all together as one sound within the studio. So there's like a Juno and an Akai, there's a Jupiter, there's a Minimo and an Arp, right? And these are all bunched together at the same time, going through different effects to create this monster. sure about the sound that you're trying to capture this is a way that you can really fine tune that sound by you know feeding an idea into it not worrying about having to play it and then I can really get into texture and sound design the outro I just kind of adapted the actual part of the original progression to keep it in the same kind of 
round, but just a bit more rhythmic. And I really wanted that kind of Latin-esque bass playing through this section and the previous section, and I kind of wanted to link the two with that. So I got Henry Hicks to come in and play some bass on this to give it more of that, that really kind of driving, sustained thing in the low end, which is a bit different to the start of the track, and then to sort of blend the two. Little synth melodies to take it out. That's the SH2000 again. Love that guy. Strings. Probably the Roland RS202. Bunch of collabby. Piano stuff as well. So that's a little insight into Good Hair Day. It was really fun to make. Yeah, yeah. Um, not much else I can tell you about that one.